are legless lizards considered lizards and not snakes? They don't have any feet. Well, today we're going to teach you why. First, let's start with the external or visual differences. Legless lizards, like most lizards, have eyelids and therefore they can blink. Snakes, on the other hand, do not have eyelids. Instead, they have what's called a spectacle or an eye cap that protects their eye instead. Next, most lizards, including legless lizards, have external ears in the form of little holes on the side of their head. Snakes do not have external ears. Their ears are hidden underneath their scaly skin, so we think the world to a snake just sounds a bit more muffled compared to ours. Third, most lizards have a non-forked tongue, or they kind of have nodules at the end of their tongue, but it's definitely not forked like a snake's. Some people might describe it as a fleshy tongue. If you look at a snake's tongue, however, their tongue is very much forked, and there are some lizards that have a forked tongue as well, like monitors, but snakes, there isn't a single snake that has a fleshy tongue. So the fleshy tongue is a characteristic of just a lizard and not a snake. Next, legless lizards, just like other lizards, have a much longer tail than snakes do. A legless lizard's tail, actually, is about half of the length of its body. For example, this one's tail starts right here. The tail begins actually where the vent or the cloaca is, and the rest is all tail. Snakes, on the other hand, have a tail that starts much lower along their body. This snake's tail begins right here where her cloaca or vent is, but look at how much little is left of her body. This is just the tail of a snake, which is considerably shorter than a lizard's tail in proportion to its body. In addition, legless lizards, like many other lizards, can purposely drop their tail and regrow it or regenerate it. Granted, their new a regenerated tail doesn't look as nice as the original one does, but they still have the ability to regrow it. Snakes, on the other hand, cannot regrow their tails. They cannot drop them on command. They can be missing their tail if a predator bites it off, but they cannot regrow it afterwards. Another difference you can see on the outside of these animals is actually their scale structure. Lizards have uniformly shaped scales all around their body. You can see here on this legless lizard that the scales on her back or dorsal side are the same shape and size as the scales on her ventral or belly side. But if you look at a snake's scales, they have small, still uniformly shaped scales all along their dorsal side. But then when you look at their bellies, their scales are an entirely different shape altogether. And that's to help protect their bellies as they slither around. But it is another difference between snakes and lizards. Just feeling these two animals at the same time, they feel incredibly different. Snakes, in my opinion, are a lot softer and smoother than lizards, especially legless lizards, because these feel like just an armorous plate. They are definitely heavy heavily protected by these very thick scales all around their body. But another fun fact about legless lizard tails, since we're on the subject, is the length of a legless lizard's tail depends on the habitat in which it lives. Species of legless lizards that are more fossorial or living underground typically have shorter tails than species that live on the surface of the ground. Why is that? Well, being fossorial, their tail would kind of get in the way if it was pretty long, so they have a shorter tail just for navigational purposes, whereas terrestrial species, Having a longer tail reduces the chance of a predator grabbing onto a more vital part of the animal's body. It's more likely just to grab on part of their tail. For example, this Sheltapusic's tail starts way up here, and the rest of her tail, or the rest of her body, is just all tail. That means that all of her vital organs are stored in this front half of her body, and that gives her a 50-50 chance on if a pre predator grabs onto her. It's gonna grab 50-50 on her tail versus her body, so more land-dwelling species, this is kind of a fossorial species, but a more land-dwelling species would have a much longer tail even in proportion to its vital organed part of its body. The last external difference between legless lizards and snakes is what you may have already noticed watching this video, this interesting line that runs down her body. This is called a lateral line, and it allows the animal to expand its body once it eats a large meal, or if it's a female that is gravid and therefore full of eggs. Just think of it like a suitcase. You know, when you have a suitcase and it's so full of clothes, you just can't fit any more in, but then there's that handy zipper that you can unzip and expand the suitcase out, and it gives you a lot more space inside. That's 
that's essentially the same purpose that this lateral line provides to the legless lizard. To compare, as you can see here, there is no lateral line on this super dwarf retic. Uh, you can see some striations, some long lines on her side, kinda. That's really just her musculature. There isn't a definitive line like you see in some species of lizards, like legless lizards, and some skinks have it too. The reason why snakes don't need a lateral line for ex body expansion is because they have much stretchier skin than lizards do, and their rib bones aren't fused in the middle. Uh, a snake's rib bones are just disconnected. They don't fuse in the middle, and they can therefore spread them apart or squeeze them together to get through tight spaces. Spaces. That covers all of the external differences between legless lizards and snakes, so now let's talk about the internal differences. Those differences that you can't see on the outside. But first, let's introduce, let's take a quick break here to introduce the animals that we're using in today's video. This is Legolas, the legless lizard that we've had for a very long time, actually. She is a fantastic eater. She is, she has a wonderful personality. She's just a terrific legless lizard. We've had her longer than any of the others, actually. Yeah, you're much nicer than Lieutenant Dan, aren't you? Yeah, Lieutenant Dan is not a nice legless lizard, so he doesn't get used in videos. This is the super dwarf reticulated python that we were gifted by Garrett from Reach Out Reptiles. We still need a name for her. We haven't decided on the right name for her yet, but she's a beautiful little girl, and we look forward to introducing her into educational programs soon. So this is kind of her practice to get being used in education. Now let's talk about those internal differences, or the differences between these two types of reptiles that you cannot see from the outside. First and foremost, their jaws are different. A legless lizard's jaw, just like all lizards' jaws, is one solid piece just like ours. Take your finger and run it along your jaw all the way across. You can feel that it's just one solid bone. A snake's jawbone, however, is split down the middle. They have two separated sides to their jaw, so they have essentially two jawbones, and that allows them to spread each side apart and wrap it around their prey. Sometimes when you're watching a snake eat, you can actually see their jaws move back and forth, or the two halves of their jaw move back and forth to quote-unquote walk along their prey. This helps them swallow large prey items whole. And there's actually a second difference that involves their jaws. Feel your jawbone right here, where it connects to your skull. Our jawbone connects directly to our skull, just like a lizard's does. But a snake's jaw actually has an extra, a bonus bone called the quadrate bone that connects their jawbone to their skull. This allows them to essentially fold out their jaw wider than we can and wider than lizards can, and helps them again swallow large prey items. However, contrary to popular belief, they don't technically dislocate their jaw, they just have an extra bone to help them open really wide. Another difference is their tooth shape. Lizards, including legless lizards, have cone-shaped teeth, and that helps them take bites out of their food, whether it's bites out of meat if they're a carnivore, or bites out of leaves if they're an herbivore. Snakes' teeth are curved backwards, and they're kind of fang-shaped, even if they are not venomous. Their teeth are curved backwards like little hooks to help the prey go down in one direction, and that also allows them to reach forward with their lips and kind of hook their hook-shaped teeth onto their prey and pull it back further and further down their throat. The next internal difference between lizards and snakes would be their rib bones and how many they have. All lizards and snakes have rib bones that start at the back of their head and run all the way down to where their vent is. But as we discussed earlier, a lizard's vent, or cloaca, stops much higher on the body than a snake's. Therefore, lizards have much fewer rib bones than snakes do. Many lizards have, from what I can tell, there isn't a ton of research online actually on how many rib bones each species has, but what I could tell online is that most normal shaped lizards, not legless lizards, have around 10 to 13 rib bones on each side. Legless lizards, based on the skeletons that I was studying, seem to have closer to 50 to 60 rib bones on each side, so 100 to 120 rib bones total. But snakes, who have very long bodies with very short tails, which that means this is the only part that doesn't have rib bones, it's just vertebrae, these guys have anywhere from 200 to 400 rib bones down each side. So total, depending on the species of the snake, with pythons having what seems to be the most, they have between 4 and 8 hundred rib bones altogether. The last internal difference between snakes and lizards is that lizards, including legless lizards, have two functional lungs. But most snakes only have one functional lung. And the lung that they have is very long, it's amusingly long, and very skinny. It helps them maintain that nice snaky shape that we all know and love. And their other lung is there, but it's 
very tiny and essentially useless. With all that said, snakes actually descended from a group of lizards. Which group, we don't know exactly, but we suspect that it was a land-dwelling, possibly burrowing species. So that means that snakes are technically legless lizards. So while you ponder that one, I want to thank you for watching today's video about the differences between snakes and legless lizards. If you want to watch us compare legless lizards to the basilisk from Harry Potter, and how we can prove that it is not in fact a snake at all, but just a big legless lizard, you can watch the video that's going to appear here in a few seconds. Thanks again for watching, and thank you Patreon backers as always for your generous support, and thank you to my beautiful models here, our legless lizard and our super dwarf retic, and we will see you next time. Why are legless lizards considered lizards and not snakes? Oh no! Ah, she's pooping on you! Ah. <laughs> well, put her over, there's the garbage, put her over there quick! She's gonna go everywhere! Oh, there she goes, too late, now hold her in one spot, I guess. Wow, that's a huge poop. Take six. Oh my god, because this super dwarf won't stop pooping. Everywhere. <laughs> no wonder Garrett wanted to get rid of her. You okay? Yeah. All right, she's gonna wrap around. Maybe. No, she's no, gonna she's fall. She's not. She's totally just she's gonna fall. She's a dumb, dumb retake. Oh my god. Super dwarfs are not smart, are they? They're cute there, though. There. Okay.